Hi, my name is Guillaume Grégoire. I'm an assistant professor at the Université Laval in Quebec City. Today, I'm going to present to you uh, the results from our project, which is called Optimizing Turbograss Fertilization to Reduce Nitrate Losses Through Leaching. So here's the presentation. We just lost the volume, Laura. Okay, I tried to put myself on mute, but maybe I can't do that. Hold on. Presentation plan. I'm going to start with a little bit of context um, for, for this project. I'll go on with the methods and the results, and then I'll draw some conclusion based on the whole project, so the whole five years of work that we did in the current cluster. So as for context, uh, this project was started in 2019. Uh, we did two years of greenhouse trials. So in 2019, we did some um, short-term trials where we had uh, 84 different treatments replicated four times in three types of soils. Um, what I mean by treatment, I mean it's a combination of nitrogen source, nitrogen rate, and um, number of applications. Based on the result from this first um, short-term experiment, we then conducted a long-term experiment in 2020, where we selected the 20 best treatments for each soil type um, and tried them over a longer period of time. So the short-term phase was for eight weeks. Uh, the long-term phase in the greenhouse was uh, going on for 20 weeks. And now we're in the field trial, so phase three, where we took the result from this long-term phase and put them uh, in a field trial in a um, specifically designed plot to collect uh, water samples. Results from the short-term project have been published um, in Journal of Environmental Quality in 2021. We are working on a second paper uh, on the long-term aspect of this uh, project. So this is a picture of the greenhouse trial. So each of these spots represent one treatment. Um, so that's a lot of uh, experimental units, actually. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of the scale of that project. Um, results from the first phase or so the greenhouse phase. Um, so this graph presents the uh, average nitrate N concentration in uh, leachate uh, from different fertilizer sources applied at different rate. So what you can see from this graph is that not all the sources are as good as one another to prevent nitrate leaching. So um, stabilized N, Uflex, for example, and um, urea was our control actually, but Uflex and X XCU were not that good to prevent um, nitrate leaching com compared to the other treatments, which mostly consisted of coated nitrogen uh, and also organic nitrogen for the corn gluten meal. So um, we we did see some pretty big differences. And that was a little surprising um, regarding the Uflex because it has been sold in the past um, as a way to reduce uh, nitrogen losses, uh, especially through leaching. Uh, but it, it didn't stand up in our trial. So it was a little better than urea, but a lot worse than the other treatments. Uh, XCU is an older technology. It's a mix of sulfur and polymer coating. And I think it shows on that. So the newer generation, the polymer coated urea, so the duration and polyon are much more efficient compared to the older technology. However, Uflex is a relatively recent technology, I would say. So that was a bit surprising, to be honest. Uh, this is just to show you the uh, impact of uh, the rate on uh, turf quality. Um, so this is for corn gluten mill, which actually uh, provided really high quality turf with very little nitrate uh, leaching. So uh, you can see that, well, it can be hard to see on that picture, but really over 
150 kilograms or something like that, you don't really see a big improvement in um, turf quality, but we did see an increase in um, nitrate losses. So, so one takeaway from that trial was that going above 150 kilograms of N per hectare per year was not really uh, justified. It didn't really make sense in our context because you just basically lost urea without having any benefits on your quality. Another example with a polyon, and we uh, basically saw the same thing. So, so 150 kilograms seems to be kind of a sweet spot, sweet spot between um, plant quality, turf quality, and um, reduced uh, nitrate losses to leaching. Uh, this is just an example in loam because um, we based our field trial on this uh, soil since the soil that we have on our experimental farm is alone. Um, so this shows the different treatments that we uh, evaluated in the long-term phase, uh, greenhouse trials so the 20-week phase. And basically what this picture shows that is that uh, we were very successful in optimizing our nitrogen application. So the treatments that we selected, uh, they consist, they, 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 they all had a very low uh, average nitrate losses. Uh, you can see some events where the, the, the losses were higher. So for example, here with the XCU um, at 200 kilogram. Um, but in general, all the treatments resulted in an average very low average uh, nitrate losses. Just to give you an example that the criteria for um, water in Canada is 10 milligram of nitrate N per liter. Um, so that's like the legal threshold. But when you talk to uh, environmental group who watch closely uh, water quality, they are starting to raise question, I would say, uh, when nitrate concentration go above one milligram per liter. It kind of tells them that there's something, something's happening in this uh, water body. But if you look at our results, I mean, our treatments were, were very low and way, all the treatments were way below that uh, one milligram uh, of nitrate N per liter. So that was uh, good news. So for phase three, the field trial, uh, our method, methodology was that we used 15 plots um, that are each 10 meters by five meters. Uh, that gives us five treatments with three replicate. Uh, these plots have been uh, built specifically for, uh, specifically to collect uh, leachate water. So they're, um, they were excavated, we put some uh, a double coat of plastic at the bottom, a drain, and then we refill the plot. Uh, so that allows us to collect all the water that goes through the turf. Uh, we have a tipping bucket to measure a leachate volume at the end of that drain. And we can collect water samples uh, every day when there's water present, so following a rain or an irrigation event. Um, so these are composite samples from the last 24 hours. Uh, this is just an overview of our um, experimental setup in the field. So you see the plots here. We have uh, two series of plots like that. Uh, you can see the top right what the tipping bucket looks like. Uh, there's a we have a, a collection system to collect water sample. That's the blue uh, lid bucket there on the top right figure. And these uh, tipping buckets are protected from the rain by these uh, plastic bins. So the treatments that we picked uh, for this third phase, uh, so we had an unfertilized control, we had a commercial control, which is something that is uh, like a typical treatment that could be used, for example, by a lawn care company, which is a 2510 with 50% slow release N, uh, and it's a polymer coated, sulfur coated uh, urea. Uh, we had a treatment with a polyen 8, a mixed treatment with polyon 8 and corn gluten meal applied at 50-50, and um, a mixed treatment with uh, urea and polyon 12 also applied at a 50-50 rate. All of these treatments were applied at uh, an annual rate of 150 kilograms of N per hectare, split in four applications, so in May, June, August, and September. So regarding 
data what we collected uh, so water leaching volume uh, with the tipping buckets um, I have to say though that our tipping buckets are now almost 10 years old uh, so we did see some failure on some buckets which means that there are some um, periods during the summer where we don't have data for all the treatments so that can I would say skew the treatment a little bit uh, but what was more interesting for us was more the uh, water sample content in nitrate and uh, ammonium. So the leaching volume was kind of a secondary measure. We, we, were, we were more interested in the uh, nitrate content of the water, so the concentration uh, more than the volume. We also uh, looked at third general quality. I don't present these results here, but just to let you know that all the treatments, except for the unfertilized control, at uh, at a very acceptable turf grass quality. So let's go with the results. So this first graph shows a total uh, leachate volume for the two years of the field experiment. Um, so as I said, this is not that interesting. We collected it because we were equipped to do it. Uh, one thing that I would like to uh, show though is that on that graph, it looked like there was more rain in 2021 compared to 2022, when in fact it was the opposite. Uh, the reason is that, as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, some of the buckets, um, the buckets were working fine, so we were able to collect water sample properly, but the data logger uh, attached to the bucket, some of them started getting giving us some weird um, weird measures. So uh, we have a, some kind of a gap during the month of July for 2022, where we don't have enough data from all the different, different replicates to uh, compile them. So that explains the difference between these two years uh, that you can see here. Uh, this is the average uh, nitrate and concentration from the different uh, treatments that we uh, evaluated. Again, a little bit of difference between 2021 and 2022. Um, uh, one surprising result is that relatively high um, concentration that we observed in the polyon 12 corn gluten meal treatment in 2021. We're not really sure uh, what happened there. Um, it was a treatment that resulted in very high quality and very low losses in the um, greenhouse trial. Uh, in 2022, it was much more in line to what we expected, but generally um, what you can see is that most treatment resulted in losses very similar to the uh, unfertilized control. Um, so yeah, maybe except for that polyon 12 uh, current gluten meal treatment. Uh, the stats are not completed yet on this uh, on these data, but that's what we uh, are expecting to see. So this graph shows the total nitrate and losses. So basically that's the multiplication of the total leachate volume by the average nitrate and concentration in water. And one thing, thing that I didn't mention on the previous slide is that all of our treatments, except for the polyon 12 current gluten meal in 2021, were below that one milligram, I would say soft threshold of nitrate and. So they were all very low. Um, so if we look at the total losses, again, uh, this polyon 12 mixed with corn gluten meal resulted in the highest losses, uh, but that's still only 6,000 milligrams. So basically that's six gram of nitrate and losses uh, over one growing season. So, so it's still a very low um, amount of N that is lost through, uh, through, through that uh, treatment. Um, and again, most of the other treatments were very similar or, or close, I would say, to the unfertilized control, and especially in 2021. Uh, in 2022, maybe the polyon 8 by itself was a little higher, um, in addition to the polyon 12 corn gluten meal, uh, compared to the unfertilized control. But, but basically, we, we were able to produce high-quality turf with losses that were very similar to what we observed in totally unfertilized turf grass. So what are the conclusions to this project? So, so in other words, what have we learned in the last five years? Um, so I didn't mention that in this presentation, but in the previous webinars, uh, we did see a big uh, 
a big increase, or I would say a, a large uh, amount of loss in nitrate N at the beginning of our greenhouse experiment. So just after we uh, put the soil into our uh, our pots and we we uh, seeded our turf grass. So our very first um, water that we collected was pretty rich in nitrate N, and that is likely due to nitrate uh, nitrogen mineralization following that soil disturbance. So we went into the field, collected collected some soil. Uh, it did dry for from for a couple of months because we collected it in the summer and started the experiment in January. So just that process of soil disturbance, uh, soil drying and rewetting had a big impact on nitrate and losses. Um, so, th so that's one thing to keep in mind. Most of the losses will occur right after we implement a new, uh, a new lawn, especially if we uh, manipulate the soil, the soil a lot. Second thing that we learned, well, we, we had a, an idea that it, it was going to be that, but all nitrogen sources are not equal. Uh, so coated nitrogen is much more efficient than stabilized nitrogen to reduce uh, nitrate losses. So again, we knew there were going to be a, a difference in the different uh, sources, but we were kind of surprised by the ineffectiveness of stabilized uh, nitrogen to reduce uh, losses through leaching. Um, fertilization above 150 kilograms of N per hectare per year is not necessary. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, but we did observe in our greenhouse trial where we did apply rates higher than 150 kilograms that it did not improve turf grass quality and it did result in higher nitrogen losses. Um, that corresponds to about three pounds of N per thousand square feet for those of you who are still using the um, imperial measures. Uh, and finally, we did show that it's possible to produce adequate turf, so high quality turf grass with very low nitrate N losses. What I mean by very low nitrate N losses, I mean they're below one milligram per liter. Again, the legal threshold is at 10 milligram per liter. And also uh, very low losses in a sense that they're not significantly different compared to the unfertilized turf grass. So um, I think these are the main conclusions that we can draw from this, uh, the last five years. So I would like to thank uh, our partners for this project. So in addition to uh, COA and uh, the, the Canadian Ornamental Cluster, basically, we had some uh, private partners. So uh, Triad Solutions, uh, the Quebec Salt Growers Association, Envirosol, uh, Le Groupe Verdure, Winman, Ashok, which is the association of uh, land care companies in Quebec, and uh, Nutrit. So uh, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact me at the email address uh, on this slide. I'm sorry I couldn't be here today, but it would be with great pleasure that I will answer any questions that you can send to me through email. Thank you.